everybody. I'm Alice K. Recklehouse, and we're here to pray the luminous mysteries with the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. And so what we're doing is we're taking the mysteries of the rosary and we're applying those to the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. Those are our topics right now for a few weeks. And um, they're all, in case you don't know what the mysteries are, in case you haven't been with us for the last couple of weeks, the mysteries are just highlights from Jesus' life. And there are some of the things that are the most important aspects of Jesus' life. We're looking at the Luminous Mysteries, which is going back into some of the other high points of his life. So we're going to do that. We're going to apply that to the Chaplet of Divine Mercy and praying for ourselves and for others. And so I invite you to join me today with, I mean, with the Luminous Mysteries. And to me, it's just like an incredibly, incredibly deep experience to be able to do that. And I've experienced the Lord so much more intimately since doing this. And so I just wanted to share it with you. Okay, so let me go ahead and share my screen. So we have here, as always, the divine mercy image. We have Jesus and with that tender, loving look on his face, very serious, but very tender and very loving. And he's got his hand raised in blessing. He's pointing with his other hand to his heart where he was pierced through the side and blood and water flowed out. That's what the red and blue rays are. Um, you can see him, if you look at his feet, you can see that he's stepping towards you. This is an active blessing. It is not one that's passive. And at the bottom, it says, Jesus, I trust in you, which is the theme of the chaplet, the overall theme of the chaplet. So let's go ahead and start in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a fount of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And then let's ask Mary, his mother, to go and pray for us and to intercede for us and bring us to Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And let's reconfirm our beliefs. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Okay, so we're going to, the first, um, the first decade is... Luminous Mysteries. So the first Luminous Mystery is the baptism of Jesus. So we know that he went to John the Baptist. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of the world. And he objected to baptizing Jesus. He said, uh, I should be asking you to baptize me, not you asking me to baptize you. I'm not even worthy to tie your shoelace. And Jesus said, No, you need to baptize me. And so when he did, then the heavens opened up and a dove came down. The Holy Spirit in the form of a dove came down upon him. And they heard God's voice saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Now, one thing to remember about this too, is that 
right afterwards is when he went into the desert to be tempted. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and then he was tempted by the devil. So we have, as the fruit of this, openness to the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit led him out into the wilderness to fast and then to be tempted. So how can we relate this to these prayers? Um, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. We're praying and we're asking for ourselves to be open to the Holy Spirit, like Jesus was open to the Holy Spirit. And we can only do that because of Jesus' sorrowful passion, because he opened up the door for us to have the Holy Spirit to be open to and to have the Holy Spirit to help us to uh, follow him and to obey him. So eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son our lord jesus christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. One of the things I love about, play, blah, about using my fingers to count this, you can use rosary beads if you want to, or you can just like, you know, just follow along with me because I'm counting with you. But if you're doing this on your own, you can use rosary beads or you can use your fingers because you have 10 fingers, right? <laughs> so that makes a decade. And one of the things that I love about using my fingers is that by the time that I have all my fingers open, I'm in a position of worship. And so I can just worship God with that last prayer at the end and sometimes even stop and take a little bit of extra time to worship him and maybe even sing a song of praise to him. And then after we do the five decades, then we do have a worshipful prayer to him. And, you know, I remember sometimes when I first started doing this, it would just hit me so strongly, the worship at the end, that I would just jump up and say, holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one. It was just, it just filled me so much with that, that strong sense of worship. So we're talking about the wedding at, at Cana. And um, again, if you don't know this story, um, one of one of the first things that we read about Jesus as an adult in his ministry um, is that he performed his first miracle, his first public miracle at a wedding in Cana. And <clears throat> Mary was there, his mother was at that. So we can kind of assume that it, they were friends of the family or something. And anyway, so the people ran out of wine, which was just a really, really bad thing to have happen at your wedding. And so Mary went to Jesus and she said, you know, he's, they've run out of wine. Can you do something about it? And Jesus said, oh, mother, my or woman, I think he said, my time has not come yet. And she just turned to the servants and she said, whatever he tells you to do, just do it. <laughs> and so then he had them fill up these big purification jars and with water and he turned that water into wine and it was the best wine at the whole wedding. And normally people saved the worst wine for last. They used the best while people were still completely cognizant and once they were getting drunk then they'd have the icky wine that nobody would really notice but um but the host of the wedding said it's kind of interesting that you've saved the very best wine for last because of course if jesus is going to turn water into wine he's not going to do a sloppy job of it right it's going to be the best wine ever so from this the fruit that we get from this is to jesus through mary and don't don't be don't misunderstand that it it does not mean that um, Mary died for us or that we worship her or anything like that. Jesus is our way to God. But just like you pray, like you 
just like you ask other friends to pray for you or your pastor to pray for you or whoever, um, we can ask the saints and we can ask Jesus, Mar Mother Mary to pray for us as well. And I've got a video about that. I will link that at the very end so that you can click on that if you're interested in learning about that. But it's like, so why would you only pray for yourself and not ever ask anybody else to pray for you? And if you're going to have somebody else pray for you, um, Mary makes a lot of sense. <laughs> She was, first of all, like with any of the saints, we know that they're in heaven. And so obviously they're righteous. And St. James says in James 5, I think it's verse 16, he says um, that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So if somebody's in heaven, then we know that they're righteous. So that's a good person to ask to pray for you. And who better than his mother, right? Um, so she obviously had some influence and, you know, she's not bossing him around. She didn't tell him what to do at the wedding in Cana or anything, but she obviously had some influence. And so, um, so we can go to Jesus through Mary. We could ask Mary to pray for us. We can ask her to, um, to take us to the throne and we can ask her to intercede for us. So how does this fit with, for the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world? Because when we ask him for anything, you know, whether it's something like this, that just seems like probably a huge, just such a huge thing at this wedding that they were without wine, because it would have been really embarrassing to everybody involved in that family um, to run out of wine, or whether it's a small thing or even like some huge tragedy or anything, asking Mary to go with you to talk to Jesus about it or to talk to him on your behalf is such just such a beautiful thing. And we're able to do that because of his sorrowful passion. And this is one of the mercies that God has given us is that we have her as someone to help us and to guide us and to, to look after us and take care of us. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Are you thinking of a problem that you need Jesus to solve for you? For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. The third luminous mystery is the proclamation of the kingdom. This is where Jesus started calling people to repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. And, um, I've included the references here for each of these so you can look them up in your Bible and read the story a little bit more. But this is this is what his ministry was until he got to the time of his crucifixion, was proclaiming the kingdom. And this is what he calls us to do also. You know, he said that the harvest is, is ready and the laborers are few. So we need to pray that God will send more, including us, out into the harvest to be harvesting souls. Um, so here we're asking God, you know, we're telling God, we're not telling God, we're like reminding God, kind of like a lawyer does in a courtroom. You know, I present to you this evidence that this crime has already been paid for. That's what we're doing basically when we offer the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. And this is especially the mystery where we want to do that because this is the mystery about, about that, <laughs> about calling people into the kingdom of God. The call for repentance is calling them into the kingdom. There's no other purpose to repent than to come into the kingdom of God. And um, and that takes atonement for our sins. And it's open not only to us, but to the whole world. Um, so I really want to emphasize, emphasize that. And then how did that take place? It took place through Jesus' passion. And not only did it take place through Jesus' passion, not only is that how it was made possible, but we don't want to waste an ounce of Jesus' blood. We want 
God wants everybody to come to repentance and his mercy is just ready to overflow. There's, there's not a lack of mercy, of mercy to go around. There is plenty for every single person in the whole world. If people would only repent and trust God, eternal father, I offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son, our Lord Jesus Christ in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. I'm sorry, I keep starting to change the wrong part. <laughs> and then the fourth luminous mystery is the transfiguration. This is where Jesus took Peter, James, and John up with him on top of the mountain. And he, I think it's Mount Tabor, but I'm not sure. Um, he took them up on top of the mountain and they saw him transfigured. They saw him beautiful and shining and talking with Moses and Elijah. And <clears throat> and there's there are some kind of fun things that happened up there and stuff. You can read the story for yourself. But the, the fruit of this is the desire for holiness. So as we think about that, as we think about the desire for holiness, which only comes through his sorrowful passion and through God's mercy, let's pray about that as we pray this decade. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood soul and divinity of your dearly beloved son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. The fifth lumina luminous mystery, for some reason that's really hard for me to say, luminous mystery. <laughs> the fifth luminous mystery is the institution of the Eucharist. The Eucharist is what we think of, um, it, it's communion. A lot of people call it the communion or the Lord's Supper. Um, so this is when Jesus was in the upper room the night that he was betrayed um, by Judas, the night that he was taken into custody and um, before his trial. And he, and he instituted the, the ceremony, the sacrament of his body and his blood that we're supposed to participate in. Um, the fruit of this is adoration adoring Jesus, adoring him in that sacrament. Um, for Catholics, this adoration also includes coming and seeing him in that host and just worshiping him, just worshiping Jesus for who he is, for what he's done, for everything about him, for, for all that he did for us, and for not just what he did for us, but who he is, just how wonderful he is. So that's the adoration. 
Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of your sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. I want to say one more thing about adoring Jesus. Um, the word adorable to us nowadays has taken on the meaning of, oh, how cute and sweet. Um, but you'll see in a lot of the ancient prayers that they call Jesus adorable. And they don't mean, oh, how cute and sweet. They mean he's worthy of our adoration. He's worthy of this profound worship and love. <clears throat> so that's so just in case you run across that, that's what that means. Holy God. Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, Look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, so again, I want to challenge you to pray this each day this week, praying this with the Luminous Mysteries. If you haven't prayed it with the Sorrowful and Joyful Mysteries, go back and do that. And if God gives you any um, insights about any of these mysteries, or if he shows you something for your life that you'd like to share, feel free to share that in the comments below. It will inspire others. It will encourage others. It definitely encourages me when I read your comments. So um Anyway, so thank you for joining me today. You guys, this was a really special time. I love you all, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.